Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem cash 04. I call this one mastering the bank reconciliation. Now don't worry, you're not gonna have to do an entire bank reconciliation, but the things you will have to do require kind of a mastery level of knowledge in order to get them done. So let's take a look. All right, notice you have a very concise set of information that's been given in this problem. I say Flyer Corps had the following information related to cash for the month ended January 31st, 2020. I give you information about the deposits made. I give you information about the checks written, both from the company standpoint and from the bank standpoint. Then I give you a little bit of additional information, some info about an NSF check, some info about an error, and some info about the prior months deposits and transits and outstanding checks. The goal of this problem is for you to calculate Flyer Corps' deposits and transit and outstanding checks specifically for the January 31, 2020 bank reconciliation. All right, with that said, take a moment, pause the video, try to solve this on your own. It is difficult, but when you're ready, come on back and I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. First up, let's, let's get the goal in mind. We are supposed to be calculating deposits in transit and outstanding checks for this current month. Now, typically, deposits in transit are simply the deposits that you as a company have written, uh, sorry, have made, but the bank hasn't processed them yet. And the outstanding checks are the checks that you as a company have written, but the bank hasn't processed them yet. So. Typically, the way you solve for this is you simply take the deposits per the company, per the cash ledger, and you subtract the deposits per the bank. So if we do that, just 21,000 minus 32,000, we get a negative 11,000 deposits in transit. And that should send up a red flag right there because if anything, we should know more about the deposits that we made than the bank does. So we should have a higher number or at least an equal number. So the fact that this comes out to a negative because the bank had a higher number than us. That's a little fishy. So we already know something's up here. And, and, and from the uh, outstanding check standpoint, you would take the 24,000 outstanding checks per the company, subtract the 24,000 outstanding checks per the bank statement, and that comes out to zero. So based on these, just taking the numbers at face value, we have a negative amount of deposits in transit, which is very fishy, and we have no outstanding checks. All right, here's the thing. We haven't considered any of the other additional information that's been given. And so I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. And we're gonna deal with the additional information and then we'll come back and redo that calculation. So I'm just gonna go in order that the additional information is on here. And therefore I'm gonna deal with this NSF check first. It says that we had an NSF check written to a supplier. NSF stands for non-sufficient funds. In other words, we wrote a check to a supplier, but we did not have the funds in our bank to carry that check, uh, to cover that check at the time, and therefore the check bounced. The check never did get processed. Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters for this reason. We say, per our cash ledger, that we wrote $24,000 worth of checks. But according to the bank, 1,000 of that was invalid. So we didn't really write $24,000 in checks. We only wrote $23,000 in checks. And that is how we use our first piece of information. All right, let's move to the next piece of information. While performing their reconciliation, management of Flyer Corps discovered that a $2,000 check from a customer was accidentally journalized for $2,200. So notice it is a check from a customer so that's money you're receiving, therefore that's gonna be part of your deposits as a company. It was only $2,000 that you received, but you accidentally recorded it for 2,200. That means this number right here, this 21,000 of deposits made, that's 200 too high because of your error. You recorded 200 more than you actually received. So we need to correct that as well. This is actually 20,000. 800. And that uses our second piece of information. All right, on to our final piece of information. It told us that the bank reconciliation from December of 2019, so the month before, 
showed deposits in transit of 14,000 and outstanding checks of 5,000. Now remember what I said when this started. I said, we have to understand what deposits in transit and outstanding checks are. And basically what they are is deposits that the company made, but the bank hadn't processed, or checks the company wrote, but the bank hadn't processed. Well, here's the deal. Anything that was in transit or outstanding at the end of December would have been processed first thing in January, maybe on the first, maybe the second, maybe the third, but definitely by the end of the month, those things have been processed. What that tells us is that these bank numbers are overstated because those bank numbers include processing that should have been in December, not part of the January activity. And so we need to adjust accordingly. Instead of 32,000 in deposits that were processed, we have to go 32,000 minus 14,000 or 18,000. This is the January deposits, right? The other 14 should have been in December. Likewise, on the outstanding checks, instead of 24,000, we have to take out this 5,000 that was left over from December. They got processed in January, but those were not part of the January activity. That was December activity that the bank was just late in processing. So we take that out of the bank's number. That brings this down to 19,000. And we have used our third piece of information. Now notice, every single number up here is different from where we started which means those initial calculations we did for deposits in transit and outstanding checks, they're completely irrelevant because they were based on bad numbers. Let's try them out again. For deposits in transit, we have 20,800 in deposits, whoops, sorry about that, in deposits per the books, minus 18,000 in deposits per the bank statement, or 2,800 in deposits in transit. For the outstanding checks, we have 23,000 checks written per the books. We have 19,000 checks processed by the bank. Therefore, we have $4,000 in outstanding checks, and we have solved the problem. All right. That was a hard one. I hope you did well on it, or I hope you at least understand what you might have overlooked in doing your calculations. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Hope you join me for another video, and thanks for watching.